Cup got underway at Donington Park, where the JPR Motorsport trio of Scott Fitzgerald, Ben Pitch and Chris Randall won the turbo diesel class. Petrol class saw the introduction of a new sequential gearbox, and victory went to Mark Burton, Graham Paddle and Ben Lack for Spirit Fitness team O'Brien. So that victory gives JPR Motorsport 60 points in the early championship lead in the diesel class. Reigning champions Team Honeywell and Happy Racing were the other teams on the podium. Spirit Fitness Team O'Brien lead the petrol class with Scarab Indigo second in the standings and reigning champions Jolly Roger third after they both made the podium at Donington. And now the championships come to Croft in North Yorkshire, venue for round two. Despite being a relatively new team, Jolly Roger won last year's Petrol Class Championship in dramatic style. Tying on points with Purple Apple Racing, but they insist that 2012 is going to be much tougher. I don't think we'll be winning the championship again this year. Petrol has got much more competitive. It was a fantastic treat for us to be able to win the inaugural Petrol Championship. But it, whereas we had a field of 10 cars last year in Petrol Class, we're looking at 20, 20 plus. So it's a lot more competitive and uh, that's good for the racing. The quality of the fields improved. The quality of the driving experience has improved, so that can only contribute to the success of the series as, or the championship as a whole. The sequential gearbox, I think, transforms the car because it's, um, it's sweet. It's a really sweet experience. It feels a bit more like a proper race car. And um, the gearbox is better matched to the characteristics of the engine, so we get more drive everywhere. their black machine is race winner Simon Ibster. This is first time in the car since this high speed crash at Brands Hatch. When you hit um, a wall square on at that kind of speed, you'll be carrying a lot of momentum and I, you, you probably know that it's through the, uh, the petrol tank, straight up over the car, over the track. Um, you know, and I was completely unhurt. Um, I'd sprained a finger and that was it. So it gives you enormous faith in the strength uh, of these things. Yeah, so I had no issues at all. It's the first time I've driven the sequential. Uh, I couldn't make Donington and uh, the car's performance as a consequence of the new gearbox is terrific. Uh, it tr absolutely transforms it. The way it pulls all the way through now um, in fifth. Uh, it's, and obviously um, the gear change is a lot smoother and quicker. There's none of this messing around with the H gates and missing the gears and it's just terrific. As ever, the starting grid is drawn by Ballot and at Craft at Alton Park race winners track talk dominoes are on pole. It's, uh, it makes a nice change. I think our last couple have been in the 20s. So. Hopefully there'll be a bit less work to do in the first stint. Um, we'll see how it goes. It's a long race, so so uh, I'm gonna try and take it a bit easy. Hopefully you won't be replaying me going off at the first corner after saying that. <laughs> but yeah, hope to hand over to James after the first stint in fairly decent shape. They got this car running well. You know the car's as quick as any other car out there, so that's good. You know you got you're at least on an even keel, and you know they set it up well, and yeah, they're doing a good job. There are three new drivers in the car that won round one, including multiple race winner Tim Wheeldon, who was keeping one eye on the weather after a wet qualifying session. If it stays like this, with a little bit of wind, the track's going to dry out and that'll be perfect. I think the problem is, most people are going to be going for dry tyres, so what the, the nightmare scenario is if it's a big downpour part way through the race when everyone's running on dries. Um, but if it stays like this, a little bit of wind, this sort of temperature, it should be a good race. Among the Fun Cup debutants here at Croft is Nick Martin, racing for JPR Motorsport in petrol sequential. We just saw this as a great introduction to doing a bit of endurance racing, really. The competition's good, they're, they're all strong drivers, and I just hope I can, I, I can be reasonable and, and, you know, and not do anything silly, really. Many are expecting Eco Racing to challenge for the title this year, but they got off to a frustrating start in round one. We had a turbo issue at Donington, which we got to the bottom of, cured that, we tested in between. Um, and the car was superb yesterday, of course that's not today. It's going to be very close, very difficult to overtake at Croft. Um, petrols are carrying a lot of speed, they're getting your slipstream, it's, it's going to be tricky, but um, you know, we've got to concentrate on our own race and go as quick as we can. One of the new teams on the grid is Red Bug Racing, returning for a full campaign after a one-off outing in a car belonging to the series organiser Paul Rose. We had a go a couple of years ago in one of Paul's rental cars and we enjoyed it so we thought we'd take the plunge. Our aim today really is just to last the five hours, get used to the car, so I don't think we're going to be troubling the scorers today, but we're out to have some fun. So it's track talk dominoes on pole for this five hour race with JPI Motorsport alongside. On row two, Eco Racing and Team Honeywell with track focused and Team O'Brien on row three. Over to our commentator Chris Hartley for race highlights.
A rolling start then for the five hour race and it's the 106 Tractor Domino's car on pole position that gets a decent start to the right of your picture there. It's going to get into turn one in the lead. In second place it's going to be Eco Racing. Then it's the 110 JPR car, the yellow machine. Honeywell, I think, slotty in behind in fourth place. Jolly Roger racing there. The triple one car trying to go around the outside of number 88 JPR QS Cargo. You're on board with Neil Plimmer, the reigning champion team Honeywell in fourth place. But with the turbo diesel kicking out more brake horsepower, it draws alongside now the 110 car towards Tower Bend. They'll drop down to third gear here, around the outside he goes and back into third place. And that is car 158 times racing, Marcus Clutton trying to come from the very back of the grid. He's got experience in British GT as a quick driver. Meanwhile on board with Adrian Duggleby and almost contact there. He's on board with the GT racing car. Up ahead the useless diesel blue machine and running wide there was Team Tiger which loses the place on the exit to Tower Bend. Meanwhile the leaders come through, a very good start to the race this. But Henry Dawes is pulled three or four car lengths clear now of the rest of the pack. This is the view from car 257, the reigning champions, Jolly Roger Racing, Andrew Beverly, trying to come from 17th on the grid as he goes into Sunny in, then Sunny out this double apex right hander, which is taking third, fourth, fourth gear, accelerating then towards the tight twisty complex, which rounds out the lap with a very tight hairpin, which is the last corner of this circuit. Very late on the race there for Andrew Beverly, trying to come onto the tail now of the 103 GT racing car, which we were riding on board with through Tower Bend. And look how it all starts to bunch up now through this complex and into this super tight left hand corner down the inside goes the GT racing car back down the inside of two of them Team Tiger and Useless Diesel.com and then he loses momentum and everybody comes back past him you're on board with him now and three, four cars come charging past five cars because he lost all the momentum with too tight a line on the way into the corner that is the risk you take and it didn't quite pay off for him but it's a good idea at the time almost worked on board with his team and he got left the tail of the eco racing machine two turbo diesel class cars these it's the 257 jolly roger racing car trying to come up the inside of the useless diesel machine the 200 car uh, in contact there as well through turn one of the start of this second lap back off between team honeywell and eco and eco pulled back away now and here at the back of the field then some of the newcomers in the championship six car uh, red both racing we heard from, heard from on the grid this is nigel greensaw they're trying to come up the inside and successfully doing so on the way to tail bend ahead of the ccs media 248 machine nigel greensaw then with all this wealth of experience from the watch here coming charging through the back there he is experts of sports car international racing experience he now is about to pick up another place here and that is another charge through the order ahead of the 207 car he goes this time here at the front of the field though the race leader is Henry Dawes the Scottish driver a race winner with his racing partner James Swift four track tour racing the back end of last season the final round at Alton Park second place is Eco and third is the team Honeywell car we've been on board with happy racing then Max Hunter mini, mini champion and Mini Melias is in fourth place and so they're experienced fun cup racer back on board with Jolly Roger racing white he's got the inside line this time and Andrew oh, Beverly on the way to turn one at Clairvaux should again, come through well, ahead of the 200 the useless diesel .com car and two. then it's 88 now uh, up in the order and there look goes Marcus Clutton to pick up a place going ahead of the 99 GMT racing car it's all action because further ahead this is going to be a change for second on the way to Tower Bend down the inside and a good sweet move that from Neil Plymouth to pick up a place you're looking at Nigel Greensaw who's going to try now and go around the outside of the JPR car on the way to Tower Bend that was ambitious and now he'll have to try and come back up the inside here not quite find a way through John Murphy keeping him away for the time being but on the exit he's got more momentum draws back alongside and gets through so another place gained for Nigel Greensaw in the 101 JPR race logic car Eco Racing Machine which has lost another place now to car 146 the JPR Machine and this is a replay and it is at the 104 that car getting all out of shape Scuderia X-Cat and losing two places that was on the way out of the hairpin while all the action was going on up front and there he's happy racing charging through on the straight to get ahead then of Neil Plimmer in the team Honeywell car so happy racing there we'll move up to second place third at Honeywell already pulled away from Eco Racing in fourth and there's still around about a 10 car length gap up to the race leader now you're on board with Nigel Greenshaw, who has therefore made it all the way up to fifth place from 16th on the grid in the very early stages of this race. And he's got the inside line here on the way to the chicane. Squeezes through. There's only room for one.
hard, but Nigel makes it to go into fourth place. Remember, he is in a petrol class car, which has less horsepower, but it's a lighter car, quicker through the twisty bits, just like this one, Porsche bike fleet. Now you're on board with Steve Johansson, Oscar Indigo Racing. This is a replay, and this is why he got in front of these two cars. CCS Media had a lunge at the inside. The 207 Spirit Fitness, Timo Bryan, with our black car, which was class winner at Donington Park in the opening round. He's got alongside CCS Media, and then Steve, who's a race instructor, goes down the inside to get another place on the way to the complex. So it's all action here at the start of the race, the random grids all mixing things up. Some quicker cars coming through the order. This is back on board the 103 GMT racing car, which is now starting to progress back up the field. It gets alongside and picks up a position here ahead of the 262 track focus car so, to gain a place we'll back after losing that, several places uh, at the hairpin to, on lap two. Uh, Meanwhile, he's getting very close up front and through goes. Happy racing, Max Hunter then into uh, the lead of the race. Help. Ahead uh, now of Henry Dawes, and he took a couple of laps to get ahead of the track talk Domino's car. So Henry down to second place. And the Honeywell car slips back to third, and there is the fourth place car, but it's also the leading petrol sequential car. Greensaw, how did he get up to that position then? Charging through the order. This was the move that got him up to fourth place to get ahead of the 146 JPR car. Different drivers in that car this weekend, but that's the car. Going very well. They were fighting quick here last year at Croft until the crash put them out of the race. Despite not having the horsepower of the turbo diesel car that's ahead of him, he's hunting down Team Honeywell. And this is a terrific drive from the eighth row of the grid for Nigel Greensaw. And he's very quick here. The Team Honeywell car heavier, runs wide. It's very hard to get that uh, big heavy car through these slower corners. And Nigel nips up the inside. Here comes Marcus Clatton again, thuds the curb, but successfully makes it down the inside of the Porsche by Fleet Machine. There are battles all the way down the order. This is the 107 JPR McDonald's car starting to make progress now from 21st on the grid, but there are wave yellows, there's a safety car board, and we've got one off to the left of your picture there, that is the Scuderia X-Cat car in the barriers, so this is going to bunch the field up, happy racing Lee, but they've all now caught up as we head for a break. Welcome to another episode of Racing No Filter. Joining me in sunny California, Bill Wood, and down in sunny Florida, Peter Keith. We're going to take a look at some of the products HPD has created for the 2012 Honda Civic. And specifically, we're going to show you an install and adjustable sway bar. Until then, folks out there, you take care. Want to keep up with all the racing action at the track? Well, download the new Go Racing TV iPhone and Android app. And remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Welcome back to Croft, round two of the Fun Cup. The race back underway after a safety car period. The green happy racing machine leads the way and a change for second. JPR race logic down the inside of Track Talk Dominoes on the way to Tower Bend. Honeywell at fourth. JPR black machine is in fifth place. You're on board now. One of the cars going well in the petrol category. And that is Johnny Roger racing up ahead, running wide there. CCS Media and he spins, almost collects. Andrew Beverly just about squeezes by and avoids any contact. There's JPR, a curious Gargo, the race-winning team from last year and very close to winning the championship they came. Drivers now getting ready for the first set of mandatory pit stops in this race. And good to see the Scuderia x -Cat car, which was in the barriers and caused the safety car, has got back up and running again. And driver change is now taking place. This is the 110 JPR car. Meanwhile, on board with Andrew Beverly as he looks at the inside of the Porsche by fleet car, which has been stuck behind for a good 10 or 11 laps now, and he's about to sneak through. There's some damage to the front splitter of the 103 JPR GT Racing Guard. He's going to get a new nose put on it. Andrew Beverly runs a little bit wide and gets completely crossed up sideways and back end steps out through Clairvaux. And after all that work to get past Porsche Byfleet, he spins it away on the very next corner, but he should get going again. Meanwhile, JPR Race Logic are in. Nigel Greensaw getting out of the car after storming up the order. Meanwhile, that 
front. This could be a challenge for second place. Team Honeywell trying to get up the inside of the track. So Domino's car, which gets out of shape through tail bend with a cleaner exit. Honeywell should get through. Just behind the pair of these is the Times Motorsport car. Meanwhile, yeah. back in the pit lane, let's see it from Nigel Green. It was brilliant. It really was. It's a lovely place to race this. It really is. And the petrol sequential around here is so much fun to drive. It really is. And it's all credit to JPR because they've done such a good job on the car. So it makes it really easy and really good fun to drive. And yeah, it's great fun dicing with all these guys out there. After running inside the top six during the first hour, the JPR Motorsport car second in the lane in the pits and dropped out of the top ten. Meanwhile, Marcus Clutch's charge continued. with greater reliability began to climb the order including the 110 car of JPR. Yeah, I really enjoyed it, yeah. I mean, it was a bit of a, a turn up to start on the front row, but uh, that was quite enjoyable. Um, I know I've done a bit of work today, that's, that's for sure. And the Nigel Greensaw had charged from 16th to 1st, Jochen Ritter now took control of the race logic car. And on his tail, despite the extra pit stop, was Jeff Forsett for Team Honeywell. With Times Motorsport slipping back, he was now gunning for the lead and it wasn't long before the reigning champions came through. Enjoying his first into the Fun Cup was Thraxton Chief Instructor, experienced single-seater racer, Pat Blakeney. This morning was the first time I sat in the car and it was pretty wet this morning. Um, but the car's just nice to drive, it's fun to drive, it hasn't really got any bad bones about it. And then obviously my first dry run was in my first in, uh, in the race, so that was just a fairly steep learning curve. Twelve months ago, Porsche Byfleet crashed out, winning contention for a win, and now they've been caught out by a gaggle of battling cars. Suddenly come up towards, there's a tight right-hander, they'd all stopped and I, I had nowhere to go, I just went straight to the back of them. Um, and that was it really, Croft is just not, uh, not a good circuit for us unfortunately. Back on track with the race leaders, car number one, Team Honeywell are in control. Behind them in third place for a lap down, that is Eco Racing on course for their first podium of the year. And they're in second place, that is Nigel Greensall back behind the wheel of race logic on board now. With Scarab Racing, Team Tiger just ahead, get into a spin there, Team Tiger running just outside the top six. That spins away, Bram de Groot gets through and just about avoids any contact. So that car's still on course for a podium, but CCS Media, I'm afraid, are in drama. Nothing which we could do, really. The throttle stuck over. I think there might be a stone or something jammed under the pedal, and that was it. Put my foot on the brake, and it just straight in. So, very sad. Bad luck there for CCS Media. Meanwhile, Team Honeywell, Jeff Forsett leading the race, but being caught. This car almost dropped a lap down. The safety car helped them out. Now Nigel Greensaw is on a real charge. He's leading the petrol class, but wants to win overall. He's also back inside the top five. JPR Curia Scargo are on for an overall top six result as well. But 103 GT Racing, they have been in strife. Alan Brown having had a crash. I was coming up behind a uh, blue car, which was going much more slowly. Uh, wasn't trying to overtake him at all, but his braking point was really unusually early. And um, I, mean, I was not going full speed, but even so, I couldn't, uh, I, I couldn't stop in time. And I went into, sort of into the back and managed to half avoid him. But his braking point was just much, much earlier than I had predicted. Four points. 
Team Honeywell continue to lead the Traxxor Dominoes car. Many laps down, but holding on to the tail of them. The second place car of JPR Race Logic has got the gap down now to just over four seconds with a couple of minutes of the race left to go. A bit battered and bruised is the Times Motorsport car, but Marcus Clutton and Pete Belshaw are on course for eighth place overall in the closing stages of this race. The Spirit Fitness Team O'Brien car with the Petrol Class winners at Donington Park. They've had a couple of incidents. That's on course for ninth place and more useful points. And rounding out the top ten, we've got the Track Focus car just behind them in 11th place, JPR McDonald's. So far, so good. Um, yeah, making progress despite a pit stop penalty. We had to come in and serve and uh, a split of change. So uh, despite that, we still made up quite a lot of places. So um, yeah, for the first race, uh, pleased. Lap and a bit to go. Team Honeywell are leading the race, but they're being hunted down by JPR Race Logic into the complex. Comes Nigel Greenshaw, clips the tyres, runs straight into the next tyre barrier. And that, I'm afraid, he's going to put his run, his charge to an end. Hopefully the car's not too badly damaged but he's second in the replay he's pushing all the time just runs a little bit too tight into the corner hits the tyres that's him straight into the next tyre barrier and that car damaged but he's going to limp home to take second place taking the win though he's going to be team Honeywell Race Logic will have to settle for being the best petrol class car that's the first one of the season for Jeff Fawcett and Neil Plymouth the reigning champion second place to Race Logic third place goes to Eco Racing Scarab Indigo Racing finished in fourth place and second in the petrol Motorsport, Ali McKeever, Steve Harris and Tim Wilden finish in fifth. A curious Scargo are sixth and third in the petrol class. Then it's Team Tiger, Times Motorsport, Spirit Fitness and Track Focus to round out the top ten. I said to him, I says, Neil, just keep it one lap in front and then we can just have a nice steady cruise at home. And then what happened? Safety car. And I knew Nigel were coming and I thought, oh no. <laughs> so I just had to keep it together, which we just managed to do. But it was very quick, you know. This is what happens, isn't it? It's not over till the checkered flag comes out, and you know you'll get Nigel catching up with the safety car with five, ten minutes to go, and putting in a drive like he just did is fantastic. When I rejoined after my pit stop, I could see Honeywell in the mirror, but then a safety car came out, so I thought fantastic. So of course we'll go all the way round, and then I counted, and there were 17 cars between me and uh, and Jeff. I thought, well, it's yeah, it's going to be a challenge, uh, but it was just brilliant. It really was great fun chasing and chasing and chasing them, and eventually on the penultimate hairpin, I just made a, a mistake, just clipped the tyres on the apex, and it was enough to break the steering, and that bounced me into the other tyre wall on the other side of the track. Uh, so then I carried on round and, and finished the lap, and obviously we still got second place. But yeah, I was just trying to win the race. Yeah, great, fantastic. Um, yeah, it went well. Nothing. Well, it did break. Exhaust broke. About 20 laps in the end, but it's fine. We're P2 over the line. Happy with that. We're chuffed a bit, and I am quite thirsty. So the champagne will go down. Lovely. I have to thank Phil for preparing the car amazingly. You know, track cars for hire, awesome performance with regards to the setup of the car. I mean, Steve and I could just drive it around like a limousine virtually. It's perfect. No understeer, no oversteer. We could just push and the car did what we wanted to do. So even with my big fat body, we managed to set some decent times. We had a brief moment when we got hit up the rear by another car, but um, that was a little bit of a worry, but it seems everything was all right and uh, obviously gone on to uh, get another second place. Many congratulations then to the overall winners and winners of the Turbo Diesel class, Team Honeywell, Race Logic with the Petrol class, and from two races we've now had two different winners in each of the categories. We next head to Snetterton in Norfolk for round three of the Fun Cup. <laughs>